Hey, everybody, welcome to episode number 146 of the Debt Free Dad podcast. Today, we are going to be asking the question, does the financial industry and the companies offering debt products, do these places really have your back? Are they doing it in your best interests or... Are they doing it for their best interest? We're going to be talking all about this topic on today's show. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt Free Dad Podcast, where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress free life. Now, here's your host, Debt Free Dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, everyone. How is everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, Defrey Dad. And as always, welcome to today's show. We would love to connect with you on one of those social platforms. And remember to get all the resources, show notes, and links from today's show. Head over to balancesense.com forward slash 146. That is B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D-C-E-N-T-S dot com forward slash 146. So, I love this topic. I think, you know, it's going to be a good discussion today. And the way I want to kick this off, guys, is a lot of the statements that I hear. And we, I don't know, maybe maybe we've said these too. I think I probably have said a couple of these, right? Um, but does the financial industry have your back? And, and I want to just read through some of the things that I've heard from either myself or even a lot of the people that I've been able to coach and, and have had the privilege of helping. Um, One is like my bank or my loan officer or my mortgage lender, just insert whatever lender they're working with, said I can afford the loan and the payments. So I just, you know, I figured I could afford it, right? Or you might hear the finance guy approved of me for that new car when I went to the finance desk when I was looking at that new ride I had to have, right? Or another one might be they raised my credit limit on my credit card, so I must be doing the responsible thing, and I must be doing this right. In fact, on the letter, it says, you're a great customer, and because of that, we want to reward you with more credit, right? Uh, Or another one might be they kept approving us for loans, and this was one that I kind of always thought of. It's like, man, we must be doing something right if we just keep getting more debt, right? I mean, why would they keep giving us more debt if we didn't know we were doing, right? (laughs) I, I, I shake my head when I think about that one now. Uh, but I also have a personal story from uh, a mo- my first mortgage. And I think I, I've shared this on the podcast a while back ago. But when we were applying for our first mortgage for our first house, uh, this is when me and my first wife were uh, getting ready to get married. And uh, they actually had to fudge our income numbers on the loan application to get us to be uh, approved for the house. And, of course... At that time, you know, I'm like so house like, oh, I got to have a house. I got to have a house. We love the house. Got to have this house. Right. I I was so young and dumb. I I really just didn't really think much about it. Like, huh, they they just must really think I can afford this house. (laughs) No, the truth was I couldn't afford the house. (laughs) They just lied on the application to be able to get me to afford the house. And then I wonder when I moved into that house, why? That payment was so stressful for us. Duh, right? (laughs) So the question, guys, and and maybe you guys could share a little bit of your feedback in this experience because I'm sure we all have had it. You know, this, this, I don't know if you call it misinformation or this different mindset of, well, if I'm able to either have, like, I got this great credit score, I'm able to get all these loans and stuff. I mean, I must be doing the right thing or I must have this going for me the way it should be going for me, right? I mean, why else would they... They give me this money. I mean, what's been your guys' experience with some of that stuff? I'm still kind of shocked that they fudged your numbers. Like, how often does that happen? <laughs> oh my gosh! I this was prior to like the this was prior to like the housing uh, bust back in like 08, 09. This was yeah. this was back in like two thousand three ish, four ish. I want to say. So they were doing all sorts of crazy stuff back then, and I'm sure it probably still happens today. I mean, I, you can't tell me that it doesn't happen. And that, you know, some of these people are getting into houses that they can't afford or or not just houses, but just any sort of loan products or buying products just to get you into whatever it is that you're trying to buy. I Yeah, I mean, I think my biggest my biggest gripe with the financial industry, I, 
I think they're all they're all they're all good people, right? This isn't well, like not a all, knock on, not all, on not all of them well, are. <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I just mean like this isn't a knock on people, right? They're doing a job. They're there. They're there, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I think where I get super frustrated with the financial industry is they take no responsibility for the position they hold, and they know people are looking to them. Maybe not for advice, but they know what they say holds water. So if they say, hey, you can afford this payment on a house, they know the people on the other side are looking at them, kind of trusting that what they're telling them is somewhat factual. And the reality is that a lot of these people are in a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, just like you. They're in debt. They don't have a great finance. They're not financial wizards. Um, they're just selling you a product. And that's, I think for me, that's where I just get so frustrated. My son is in car sales, right? His job is to sell cars. The amount of people that come to him and want help trying to figure out how to get out of a car or, or take advice from him. I love my son, but just so you know, he's living with his mom and dad still like <laughs> he, if he did give you advice, I'm not sure that it's like great yet. You know, I'm not saying he's a great kid, but he doesn't know like the world yet. You know what I mean? And like, but I, he, you know, it's also, it's something I, and try to impress on him is the, what he says holds water with people because they do look to those people as like, Hey, do you, you know, this is a little expensive. Do you think I can afford this? They ask those questions they are looking for confirmation. Yep. And that's probably my biggest hang up when you go and sign up or you go sign up for a house and they base every, you know, these, there's a lot of TikTok people now on, mortgages and here's what you can afford on your income on uh, you know on your gross income and everything a lot of stuff is sold on gross income gross income gross income and it's like they throw out these crazy numbers and i'm just like there's no way i mean i know what i know what i make and i and i would not even afford i couldn't even afford what you're saying and you know and but people don't understand you know they just go and they say well you can afford this and they walk out with a huge payment on a house and now they're house poor and they're mad. But at the end of the day, that person isn't in a position to help you or give you advice or tell you what you can afford. He's just there saying, Hey, the book says that you can afford this and therefore you can afford this. And he's not wrong, right? He's not that person selling it is not wrong because on paper, that's what legally, right. You, he, it says you can afford this. Right. Yep. And, and that is where I think, the biggest problem is, is that, I mean, I think you, you hit it, is that a lot of these people who hold these positions of either approving people for loans or working with the financing on the loans, whether it be mortgages, car payments, personal loans, I mean, whatever it might be. Um, I think people are so undereducated and not very knowledgeable of money and personal finance and how debt works and that they that they do they look to these people as they are the end all be all and and they're the ones that that like they're the higher ups like they have this you know higher level of knowledge than they do and and maybe they do to a certain extent but just so people know on this podcast there's been people in these industries that have come into our program to get out of debt <laughs> right? right um you know they they've come through our program and and that there's anything wrong with that but it's just you have to understand that the financial industry as a whole is a for-profit business. Now, some people in the financial industry are supposed to be fiduciaries, meaning they're supposed to have your best interests first. But I'm here to tell you, I, I never, ever feel that way going into a conversation with anybody in the financial industry. And again, not, <laughs> not, nothing against them, but it is a for-profit business. They are not in the business of free will or, or just, you know, doing things for free. They, they are in the business to make money. Right. And well, and, and when I was, when we were purchasing our house, the, we were just at the beginning of that COVID bubble thing where the houses were going crazy and we put an offer in over, we overbid on our house. And, uh, and I said, Oh my gosh, if the appraisal does not come back and the value isn't below what we bid, we might be out because I'm not willing to pay less than 20% down. And <laughs> the bank tells me, no, no, you don't have to put 20% down. You could put less. And I'm like, I know I can, but I'm not willing to pay the additional insurance right. for my mortgage. 
So for that, like, they're like, but don't worry, we'll still get you that mortgage, even if the appraisal is higher. So they weren't thinking about me in that point when I clearly stated I needed to do 20% down. That was what I was doing. Yep. Right. They just weren't. Well, and I think, and, and again, I mean, if you look at, you know, and I don't know all of them, but I think in general, you're right. They're getting paid, you know, that's how they're getting paid. They're getting paid because they want you to close on that, that loan. Right. And so it's like, a, it's like this um, conflict of interest, right? It's like your best interests are at heart, but you getting this loan puts money in my pocket, yeah. but I'm totally protecting you. Like it just is like, so like when you feel like they're pushing you towards like a different loan or higher percentage or this or that, there's a chance that it's because they're selling it to you because they're going to get more money by getting you to take. So it's like going to a dealership, you know, it's like people, if you got cash, you don't get great deals because where they make all their money is on the financing. So if they can get you to a 72 month versus a 36 month, they're going to make more money on that. So it's all, so it's easy to say like, I'm looking out for you, but are you really? Maybe some people are, but I don't know. It'd be hard for me. I understand if that's how I make my money, I'm going to, I'm going to try to sell you where I'm going to make more money. Yeah, absolutely. I remember I was in a, this is a much smaller, well, (laughs) maybe some people want to get small, but I remember I was in a, I was in a jewelry store. This was before my wife gave birth to her daughter. I was getting her like a, a necklace and there was a young, I wouldn't say kid. He's obviously early adult, early twenties. And he's in there with his girlfriend or fiance and she found something that she really liked. And the salesperson was just like all over it, right? He was going to close this deal. And, and how did he close it? He got him to get it on, put on a credit card. And I remember the conversations of like, well, I don't know if I've got enough money to afford this, but and the kid and the kid's like, well, I could, I could probably work Saturdays for like the next six months and get this thing paid off. And the, and the car sales or the car salesman, the jewelry salesman's like all for it. Like, oh yeah, that's, that's what a lot of people end up doing. Right. And so like this person now is buying this, but also buying another product by going into debt. And that credit card likely is going to come with a pretty hefty interest rate as well. Right. So I think, I think it happens a lot more than a lot of people think. I mean, you look at even just going to like, you know, these retailers, you know, every single retailer that you go to is offering you a credit card, every single one. And sometimes multiple times in just one transaction. Are you sure you don't want a credit card? You could really save a lot of money, which is this credit card, right? And it's like, do these retailers really have your best interest in mind by trying to get you trapped in their credit card? Absolutely not. You look at these buy now, pay later programs, same thing. Do you think these people are really having your best interest in mind? And they're finding that a lot of people who are participating in these buy now, pay later programs are defaulting. And they're starting to have to pay hefty fees. It's ruining what they have of their credit, what's left of their credit. It's just not a very good situation. And for a lot of these credit card companies, I mean, there's just no limit of how many credit cards you can actually have. There is no limit. And guys, I've worked with people who have 20, 25 plus credit cards and they've got debt on all of them. Like they will keep giving it to you, right? So when these credit card companies send you these marketing messages and they push these these you know cards on TV with celebrities and all that stuff, I'm telling you, they are in the business of making money, right? Car dealerships selling financing, mortgage companies selling loans, banks selling home equity lines of credit. Heck, we had our own bank try to tell us that we can make money off of a credit card by earning points and rewards. Now, at the end of the day, are they wrong? No, but I can guarantee you it's a very small percentage of people who come out on top in that credit card game that they're trying to sell. But again, are they having their best interests, our best interests in mind? No, they're they're selling a product. So this is why I think, you know, it's just so critically important that you take it upon yourself to educate yourself about personal finance, listening to podcasts like this, getting yourself educated on how debt really works. Because if, if you don't, I mean, you can easily, easily get taken advantage of. And I'm here to tell you that these places don't care. Like I worked with a pretty reputable mortgage, mortgage company when we got our mortgage for our house that we bought 18 months ago. They are awesome. Top of the line customer service. And they were really great at doing everything they, that they said that they were going to do. They, they said that they cared. But at the end of the day, the only thing they care about is if you can make the mortgage payment. That's it. They're not your friend. They're not your buddy. They just want to make sure that you can make the payment. If you can make the payment, they're going to sign you up. And then it's on you to have to live with that and figure it out, right? So I don't know. It's 
I, I see so many people falling for this though that my bank told me, mortgage company told me, the the lender at the car dealership told me that I could afford this, and and now here I am, and I can't I can't pay for these things, right? Uh, and I think this is another reason why I push financial coaching. It's like financial coaching is an unbiased approach. Like when you hire a financial coach, they're a fiduciary, meaning that they have your best interest in mind. You pay a fee, and they're going to give you all the options based on your situation. What option you choose? is up to you and it does not benefit the coach in any way whatsoever, right? Any advice that you're given, it's like, hey, based on your situation, here are the options that you have. You get to choose which one you're going to do. And whatever option you go with has no benefit for them. Whereas opposed to, like Ryan said, you know, you take out a mortgage or, you know, you go buy a mortgage from a company, they benefit from the advice that they are giving you. You hire a financial advisor, right? That isn't a true fiduciary, they benefit by getting you to invest in certain investments that they offer and they get commissions off of those items, right? So you really got to be mindful of these things of, of do they have your best interest in mind or are they just out to get paid? Hey, if you love planners, this is for you. But do you know why planners frustrate me? Because they only really get it half right. Now, sure, they're really good and fancy about helping you manage your time, which is really important, obviously. That's what a planner's for. But where they get it wrong is money, the second most valuable resource in our lives. Most planners don't include any financial planning, things like you know, keeping track of paydays, bills, due dates, spending, yearly expenses, budgets, cash flow planning, debt elimination plans, and goal planning, right? None of that stuff. That's a real pain. And then what? Then you got to create your own and some silly binder, right? And who has time for all of that stuff? So instead, what happens? Nothing, right? A lot of people tend to ignore their finances even more and things only get worse. Well, that all ends today because I am so excited to announce and release my brand new, totally awesome debt freedom planner. This thing's awesome, by the way. Now, before you say, Brad, I've already got a planner. This is not an ordinary day planner. This is the Debt Freedom Planner, which is a companion tool that works with your day planner, and it's built to help you manage your money, pay off more debt, and melt away financial stress. And, and I believe this is the tool that a lot of people who want to take control of their finances have been waiting for. So head on over to therealdebtfreedad.com, click on the Debt Freedom Planner in the menu to get access to your planner today. All right, all right. That sound means it's time for the uh, celebrations of the show. Man, those conversations get me all riled up. <laughs> I just I just think so many people fall for it. You know, they fall for it. They, ugh. And it's so painful to see people get themselves wrapped up into so much debt because of the advice that they're given by some of these, uh, some of these people who hold these positions. And uh, it's just, it's just sad to see. So, do your homework before you go into debt. Take time. Think about the purchase. Don't let emotion win. Don't let their sales pitch win. And make sure it's the it's the right decision for you guys. So, all right, we're going to kick it off with Katie Hatfield. Katie sent me a Facebook message recently. Uh, she was on our podcast actually back uh, in July. And she has officially now reached and paid off over $90,000 now on a single income. She says, I'm watching my numbers go down and just under $40,000 left to go. She says, seeing that three as the first number and the amount of debt that she has to pay off is huge. She says, seems so far away, but not that long ago is so awesome. Good for you, Katie. Jess Frazier, my win for the week has was no eating out. This is a huge one for us because it's e so easy to get something on the go. Trying my best to be more disciplined. Awesome, Jess. Good for you. Uh, Patrice Johnson, I've paid off $54,576 since joining Roots. I'm so close to being debt-free. Of course, social influence and marketing are coming after me pretty hard. I'm just making bigger blinders. Yeah. I re I remember when we got out of debt, and maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I remember when we, when we got really close and it was getting towards the end, I just literally felt like every day was like seven credit card offers. I yeah. felt like at that point, like everybody was like, 
You can come back. You can come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're holding on, holding on. But fifty-four thousand five hundred seventy-six dollars paid off. That is so impressive, Patrice. Congratulations to you, uh, Jenny Wise. Paid seven hundred seventy-nine dollars in medical bills this month. Jenny, congratulations. That's awesome. Shanna Skinner, I went and looked at a car, but didn't do any financing, doing our homework and saving cash for it. I just had fun on Facebook page and it was crazy how many people thought it was so amazing and giving me congrats on financing my purchase. I did put the edit. I was just looking. <laughs> yeah, we talk about that a lot, right? Social influence. And what do a lot of people do? As soon as they buy that car, there goes the picture, right? And then you get all the pats on the back and celebrating. Oh, yeah. But good for you, Shanna, for doing your homework and, and saving up. That's awesome. Uh, Brenda Fillower, paying on a couple of credit cards so that I should be able to have them paid off in the next five months. Awesome, Brenda. Congratulations to you. And congratulations to all of you guys who are working your way out of debt. And if you're just getting started with our podcast or maybe you've been listening for some time and you're interested in how you can get started on the road to financial freedom, uh, go ahead and visit our website at balancesense.com or therealdebtfreedad.com and sign up for my free Life Without Payments workshop where I'm going to show you the first steps that have helped tens of thousands of people just like you and I kick financial stress and worry for good. And thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback and it also helps us grow our podcast. So please leave us an honest review. We read every single one of those. And as you guys know, the Debt Free Dad podcast is here to help you live a happier and stress-free financial life. So if you know someone who could benefit from our show, please give us a share. We appreciate you. And uh, hey, guys, we'll see you guys on an upcoming episode. Take care. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback, and it also helps us grow our YouTube show. So please give us a like or leave us some honest feedback on this video. And if you want the latest from the show, obviously be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. And for the latest resources, or if you want more information on how to kick debt and financial stress, please be sure to check out the links in this video or head over to therealdebtfreedad.com. We'll see you guys on an upcoming show. Take care.